Yeah, hi folks. Now whether you like Avi Yemeni or not is irrelevant. If it weren't for him, we would have only seen one side of the lockdown protest in Comrade Dan's Victoria. And it makes me sick to see how a Dern controlled police and a Dern controlled media conspired together to stop Avi Yemeni coming to New Zealand. Anyway, folks, the uh, police Interpol document has now been verified. So I'll start there today. The New Zealand Herald finally verified that the Interpol leak is real. So are they holding those responsible accountable for the shocking abuse of power? <laughs> Don't get too excited, no. They're working for the police to try find the mole who released the outrageous email fishing for information to ban Australian citizens from entering New Zealand because they were scared of them attending a protest. In fact, they even justify the behaviour by saying that it made sense to ban us to avoid adding to the tensions with far-right agitators being flown in from Australia. Man, I thought New Zealand had problems. I didn't realise it was that bad where the so-called free press is acting like the state media in communist China. Anyway, now to a bit of background. Which I think is based out of Canada, but has branches around the world. And RV is a controversial and he's a social media um, person and, and presence in Australia and around the world. Um, he was refused entry to New Zealand by immigration staff uh, I think a little over a week ago, as he was planning to come to New Zealand to attend and cover for Rebel News the rally, what turned out to be a Destiny Church rally at Parliament last Tuesday. Uh, ben, my producer, and I went down there and we had the Tamakis, the self styled Bishop Tamaki and his wife, uh, in the studio for an interview the next day. It was a peaceful protest. It was not like uh, the occupation protest, some would say, that, that happened in February. There were counter-protests, but uh, to be honest, it was a bit of a damp squib if you were looking for a massive uh, news story. But the news story that did come out of it was that Avi Yemeni and a colleague of his were trying to get into the country. The colleague got in. He was rejected before he got on the plane in Aussie on the grounds of bad character. And Immigration New Zealand insisted at the time that that was an operational decision made by their staff in isolation on the information they had available to them. Published yesterday in the BFD, which is a new iteration of the Whale Oil blog site one run by Cameron Slater, was an email purporting to, purporting to be from Interpol in Wellington, writing to Interpol in Canberra with these two men's names, including Avi's name, saying... We would like some dirt on them. We don't want them to come to New Zealand. We haven't got anything. Could you provide some information? There have been questions raised about the veracity of that email and the email address. There has been no statement, though we are seeking one, from police or Interpol in Wellington as to whether or not that is a genuine email. Well, well it has now been confirmed, and there's more. Ladies and gentlemen, the circle of Jacinta Ardern's lies are fast closing in. So much so, they're about to strangle the truth out. Let me explain in under 90 seconds. Last week, the PM blamed immigration for the decision to ban me. I understand that it is solely for immigration and it's not something I had any awareness of until I saw some commentary online. A similar statement was followed by New Zealand police. The only problem for both of them is that a secret Interpol memo was leaked blaming New Zealand police for the decision to ban me without any cause, prompting the only real Kiwi journalist in the press gallery, Sean Plunkett, who questioned the Prime Minister. Appropriate thing for Interpol to do. I can't verify anything that you're putting to me at this time, Sean. Nice try, I guess. But unlike the rest of them, the veteran journalist refused to give up and put it to Immigration New Zealand, who were quickly, surprise, surprise, able to verify Interpol's interference, blaming the information they had received from Interpol Wellington. So, here's the circle of lies. Police blame immigration, immigration blame Interpol, Interpol blame police. And Jacinda, 
She's an innocent bystander. I call bull. Exactly. She controls the police and the media. And yesterday I attended the post-cabinet press conference and asked Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern for comment on this issue. She said she could not verify the email. She was aware of Avi Yemeni's rejection at the border and she understood that was to do with issues of, of character and having a criminal record. Well, how do we cut through all this? How do we try and shed a li little more light? We talked to the guy at the centre of it all, uh, Avi Yemeni from Rebel News. He joins us on the line from Australia now. Avi, good morning uh, to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, mate. Thanks for having me. All right, Avi, I want to go through just some facts so I can build up a picture of my own mind. What happened when you went to travel to New Zealand for this rally at Parliament last last week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, most bizarre situation. I rock up to check in as I do um, often when I go to travel around the world. Um, and I handed over my passport for the uh, Qantas staff to put me onto the flight. And um, suddenly she comes back and says, oh, sorry, I've never had this before. Um, your, your passport has been flagged. She said it's good on the, on the Australia side, it's the New Zealand side. Um, so she's gone over to her manager, they've got in contact with New Zealand immigration, and uh, I stood there at the counter on the manager's phone speaking to New Zealand immigration for about 40 minutes. Um, and they were all typical questions you'd expect from any sort of immigration interview until suddenly out of nowhere, um, she said the one line that I could tell from the way she said it, that, that, that it, it was what she wanted to say 40 minutes ago. She just had to tick all the boxes. Um, and she said, oh, I've read an article about you online and I determined that you're uh, of bad character and um, I'm going to exercise my right under 90, my powers under 97, I think it was, of the Immigration Act of 2009. And I'm going to refuse your entry today. And look, I'd become a little prepared. I, I, I'd already gotten advice earlier in the morning um, prior because there was a uh, the New Zealand Herald article, which, you know, from my experience... OK, uh, did, I, let, let's just get... I want to get the facts straight first. Yeah. So, so you were talking on the phone to an immigration official in New Zealand? Yes. OK. She invoked what was it, Article 97. She said, I have read I, an article. Yeah. And she said, I have read an article online which makes me believe you are of bad character. Correct. She did not That's make reference to your convictions, to the domestic abuse convictions. Uh, 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 she, she, she did from that article. She goes, I've read it. I go, what the article, is, you know, she was talking about, because uh, I, I thought she was referring to the conspiracy theorist of suit because there's a lot in that article which was mm. focused around okay, the whole, okay. um, our work and then she said oh you have a conviction uh, for uh, for a violent offence and that's when I questioned it I said well I, I have had advice and I understand that uh, the threshold is 12 months in jail that was a summary offence um, yeah. it's, it's the lowest bar of, of, okay. a, of a conviction. Okay, and but she it, said it she was basing the character assessment of you as being a bad character. Off an article. Off an article. Did she refer specifically to whether or not this was the Herald article? No, no, she didn't. Um, Have so immigration it, subsequently confirmed that it was? No. Okay, so they, we don't they, know. They Let's it, just stick yeah. to the facts, Harvey. We don't know what, what article she was referring to. Yes, we do. Now, folks, I recorded this yesterday. Now, folks, this is the police Interpol document that was used to stop Harvey Yemeni from coming to New Zealand. Now, in the next clip, I compare this document with this New Zealand Herald article which was designed to smear Avi Yemeni and Rakshan Fernando. Now apart from comparing the dates, I mainly focus on the last bit at the bottom here where I highlight how the language used in this document clearly came from the anonymous news article. It clearly shows the police are working in unison with the Adern bought and paid for media.
Now, the first thing we need to look at is the date on the seeded New Zealand Herald article prepared for the police to pick up. NZ Herald, 20 August, 2022, 1.30 p.m. Interpol Wellington, 21 August, 2022, 9.05 a.m just 20 hours later. No coincidence there, folks. Both subjects are associated to New Zealand social media commentator Chantal Baker and are expected to join her at the protest in Parliament posing as reporters. Kiwi conspiracy influencer Chantal Baker claimed on Facebook that YouTuber Avi Yemeni and Rush Rukshan Fernando, aka Real Rukshan, would be joining the masses in Wellington. Avi Yemeni is noted by commentators as a far right e extremism commentator. Yemeni is a Melbourne-based social media personality who was banned from Facebook and is known for his extremist far-right ideology and comments. Avi Yemeni has proudly called himself at a London protest in 2018 the world's proudest Jewish Nazi. Yemeni said he was the world's proudest Jewish Nazi. Rakshan Fernandez is noted as a misinformation super spreader. Rakshan has also been listed as among the Top 100 Misinformation Super Spreaders. Rakshan has been labelled as Hero of Anti-Mandate, Anti-Vax, Anti-Government Movement. Fernando, Fernando, meanwhile, is described by mainstream Australian media as a Sri Lankan-Australian wedding photographer who has become a hero for those supporting Melbourne's anti-vaccine and anti-lockdown protests. Now, folks, from that we can clearly see that the police... Interpol document that went looking for dirt on Yemeni and Rukshan was based on that New Zealand Herald article. Now, in one way, shape or form, this was directed by Adern, or at least someone close to her. It had to be. <laughs> 